Hi, readers. Welcome to Books Connect Us from Penguin Random House. This is a podcast about staying connected with each other and the stories and authors who inspire us. Diksha Basu is the author of The Windfall and her latest novel, Destination Wedding. Infused with warmth and charm, Destination Wedding grapples with the nuances of family, careers, belonging, and how we find the people who make a place feel like home. Terry McMillan raves that Destination Wedding is a witty and romantic novel, perfect for all readers. Now let's join Random House's Taylor Knoll in conversation with author Diksha Basu. Good to see you. How are you? Good. Good to see you too. Happy belated birthday. Happy oh. anniversary on five years in publishing. Thank you. <laughs> Happy publication. A little bit Thank belated. You. This is Diksha's beautiful novel, Destination Wedding. Um, Diksha, do you want to start by telling some of our listeners a little bit about your book? Yeah, uh, that's a that's a very open-ended question, Taylor, yeah. <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I would love to. So Destination Wedding is um, about a week long, this sounds like science fiction at this point in our lives, but it's about a week long, about a week long, uh, big um, international wedding in New Delhi with people coming in from all around the world. And we enter the story from the perspective of the bride's cousin, who is on her way from New York to New Delhi for this one week. She is obviously, uh, she is also of Indian origin. She's traveling with her parents who are now divorced and her mother's bringing along her white, very white American boyfriend. Um, Her best friend, Marianne, is also coming for the holiday, uh, slash wedding is turning into both. Her father's there, um, eager to figure out what returning to India means for him at this point in his life, uh, several years after divorce and several years after he's, he last visited there. And it takes us through one week of this sort of over the top extravagant wedding like Indian weddings tend to be. Um, and everything that happens to everyone along the way. This book is so fun, and this the cast of characters is just incredible. I love them all so much. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about what inspired you to write this particular novel? Yeah, so I often, I usually work from my characters up. So um, I start, I know, you know, when I finished The Windfall, I loved those characters so much, and I was so sad to let them go. Mm-hmm. And then over sort of, a part of letting them go was, like finding my new characters and forcing myself into falling in love with my new characters in order to be able to let go of the previous ones. So that's how I usually work. I find my characters and I start to live with them. I start to interact with them and breathe with them. And that leads me to the story and the setting. But one of the things with the setting that I've been playing on my mind is that a few years prior, I had had my own big Indian wedding. And I think the bride and groom don't really get to enjoy it the way that the guests do. So, you know, I just remember sort of standing and um, meeting endless people who I haven't seen since I was four or five years old, while also um, watching my friends from different walks of life, from uh, my elementary school days, my high school days, my undergraduate days, really from people came from all over the world, different places, different phases of my life, all meeting each other, getting to know each other, I could sort of see them drinking at the bar while I was in this much more formal situation. Right. So the setting was a way for me to relive my own wedding that I in a way missed out on. I love that you're kind of a spectator <laughs> to your own wedding in that. Right. Um, and I love the photo that you just shared on your Instagram account with um, the picture of your, your wedding attire. It was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I have a friend who's a very talented designer, Ballavi, in case she's watching. And she, I was, you know, I wasn't um, when I wasn't t- traditionally excited about the clothes and the jewelry. I, that's never been sort of things that interest me that much. And so I was planning to just wear a sari that I've owned before. But this friend of mine swept in two weeks before the wedding and absolutely forbade that. <laughs> and uh, really quickly, within 10 days, designed this beautiful outfit for me to wear. That's but amazing. I will say, my um, a, a lot of makeup artists charge, and this is this also comes up in the book. These days, charge like huge amounts has become such a big industry. And not only did I wear my own makeup, which was very little, but I wore it. I did it all using free samples from Sephora. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> and I feel that's important to know. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely. A good um, so as we kind of talked about, the characters are really for me the heart and the soul of this book. You know. The plot is crazy and so fun, but you really want to keep reading because of these amazing characters. So I'm wondering if you have a favorite 
of all of these characters? Oh my gosh. Is that a really hard question? That's an awful question. <laughs> I feel like, you know, that's like asking if I have a favorite child. <laughs> no, no, you know, and I think one of the, um, one of the reasons I hope that the characters come alive, and this is going to be my way of dodging this question, but I think one of the reasons I hope they come alive is I really start to love my characters for their foibles, not despite them, not despite their mistakes. I really fall in love with them. And um, I don't necessarily want them to change course because I like seeing the story go where it goes, but I feel a desire to accompany them everywhere all the time. And I hope that comes true. So I would be very hard pressed to pick a, an absolute favorite character. But one thing I will say is in The Windfall, there was a character, Mrs. Ray, who's an old widow, who um, who I loved. And I heard got feedback from a lot of readers who also loved her. And her, I was really not willing to let go. So she makes a very brief fleeting appearance also in Destination Wedding. That's so great. I love that they kind of have that lifelong relationship with these characters. That's amazing. Mm. Um, so if you don't have a favorite character, do you have a favorite scene in the book that was the most fun to write? Okay, so I can tell you which characters I found really fun to write. So okay. now I'm going back to the previous question in a we'll way. We'll compromise. And so, the, so there's um, so I write a lot uh, about second chances at love. This came up in the windfall. This comes up repeatedly at destination wedding. It's a theme I find very interesting because I feel so much of um, so many books, movies, everything is based on the idea of happily ever after. But you know, with people living longer and longer lives with the idea of sort of what defines middle age changing, mm -hmm. I feel, and, and, and uh, in most societies, divorce and separation becoming socially acceptable. I find the second chance of love very interesting because also as we get older, we tend to get more set in our ways. I feel when we're younger and we're uh, maybe going into our first long-term relationship or marriage, subconsciously or consciously, there's a tendency to maybe change and adapt to the person that you're with, so you fit in together. Um, and when you get older, that seems so bizarre that you wouldn't, you know, you get more and more set about what you are not willing to change, what you're not willing to compromise right. on. And so then I wonder what does, in that case, what does romance mean? What does love mean? What does another relationship mean? if you have it. And so that's something I really enjoy exploring. And also because it allows me to, um, I'm on my first and hopefully only marriage. So it <laughs> allows me also to think about um, alternate realities for myself. So uh, Tina's character, Mr. Nas, mm -hmm. he's in his mid fifties, he's been divorced. It's a relatively good divorce. I won't say too much more about the backstory for that because it's in the book. Uh, his ex-wife, Tina's mother, Radha, she's coming along as well for the wedding. And like I said, she's got this white American boyfriend who's sort of this dashing older man. And um, Mr. Das is go planning to date for the first time in Delhi. And he's really never dated because Mrs. Das, Radha Das, was the first woman he ever dated as such and also ended up married to. So he's never uh, been single, which is, again, for people of our generation, our age, so strange. Yeah. But that's the reality for many people. So following his story, as he trips and stumbles and may or may not find his way to another happily ever after, something I really enjoyed exploring. And it was, it was really fun to read. It's so heartwarming and it feels so realistic to me. Um, I was completely in on that storyline. I can't get over how beautiful this cover is. I love this cover and it was amazing, wasn't it? We got one try and it was sort of just the perfect cover. Just magic. Yeah. <laughs> so the name of this series is Writer's Routine. So Diksha, can you talk a little bit about your writing routine? Or my lack of writing routine. Yeah. Or that. <laughs> I, well, so I, I write consistently. I write all the time and I try, but not uh, with a consistent routine. One of the reasons for that, and this was much more with the windfall, over the last three years, I've had two babies. So my time has completely shifted shape. I no longer have the luxury of sort of spending eight hours a day staring out of the window waiting for inspiration to strike. I write within shorter bursts of laser sharp focus. So my method of writing has completely changed. I carry the, I carry the book with me 24 hours a day mm -hmm. in a way I never switched off, which I feel in retrospect with the windfall, I had clear work days and now I don't necessarily have defined work days. It's constantly in my mind. But when it came time to actually sitting at my laptop and actually having time to put my fingers to the keyboard, they were um, briefer and more focused and more energized writing sessions. And I think and I hope that that energy shows up on the page because it was a very different writing process. And uh, 
so I wrote most of Destination Wedding. I keep looking over because I've got the book in my hand. <laughs> I wrote most of it in Bombay, in Mumbai, which is where we were um, largely living for the last two years. And um, it was strange also to write about in India, in India, because a lot of the windfall I found I wrote outside India. So I was, I, um, my, we spend a lot of time, we usually divide our time between New York and Bombay. This is all pre-pandemic. And um, yeah. the windfall I found for some reason, I was unable to write about it while in India. So while in India, I was immersing myself in the country and then I was coming away and really putting down what I was writing. But Destination Wedding, I wrote at times sitting on um, the promenade in Bombay on the waterfront. I wrote in um, cafes all around the city. I really wove my life and my writing into the country while I wrote. Um, but again, it's never a nine to five kind of thing. I don't think writing can be. But it's continuous. I work a lot and I work every day, but there's nothing set. I don't have one of those secrets to, you know, I wake up at 4 a.m. and I write before dawn or I write late at night. <laughs> I do usually write during normal uh, light hours, but every day. I admire those people that can get up at four in the morning and, and get to work, but I'm not one no. of them. I wish I were. Yeah. <laughs> Very aspirational. And I, I think it's really interesting that your writing experience was so different between the two books because of where you were based. Um, and do you feel like that kind of influenced how the story came to be a little bit too? I do think so because, you know, um, the windfall is in ways a more Indian story. And I, uh, because the, the characters, they, there are scenes in upstate New York, there are, there's a travel involved, but at its core, Delhi plays a really integral character in the windfall. Destination Wedding is more international. There are characters who are coming from all over the world. There's more of the book based in New York, based in London, um, all over really. And so while Delhi is once again a character in the book, it wasn't as rooted in in India as the windfall. I want to be careful when I say that actually. I'm going to stop saying that and backtrack and think a little bit more about what I mean. I think what I mean is my, a lot of my characters for Destination Wedding came from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So even though Delhi was a character like in The Windfall, the characters came from elsewhere. And so maybe that freed me up or I don't know, it's the chicken or the egg. Did that happen because <laughs> I was in India when I wrote it or did it help to be in India while I wrote it? I'm not 100% sure, but I do know that The Windfall, my characters were born and raised in Delhi. They lived in Delhi and one had gone out. The son mm -hmm. character had left Delhi, but there weren't that many instances of people sort of coming into Delhi which the right. de destination wedding does. It's a long-winded answer to uh, a simpler cool. question. Well, there's a comment here saying how interesting it is to hear the background on that. And I think it's, I think it's really fascinating as well. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. So do you have any tips for aspiring writers right now? I think what I just said about uh, the consistently working, mm -hmm. I, I don't have tips because I still sometimes cannot believe I am fortunate enough to have readers. So I uh, I don't yet have the uh, <laughs> confidence to impart advice, but I think really, uh, and I think maybe maybe that's the only advice uh, to not ever take readers for granted because I know I get shocked every time I'm here, even now when I'm seeing comments come up, I'm just so excited by the fact that there's people giving feedback as we go. But I think uh, to do it consistently, other than that, I really don't know um, to not take any advice, including mine. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, there's just no, I, I have not figured out the secret to, to it yet. I just do nothing other than sit down with my laptop and hope for miracles. So what is that? What is your favorite part of, of publishing a book? Is it being alone with the manuscript? Is it saying Chrissy Teigen tweet about the book? <laughs> Uh, Chris and Ethan's tweet, I have to say, it's wild to see her power. It has been a very exciting 48 hours. <laughs> yeah, she, and for those of you who haven't seen it, who are watching, she is completely obsessed with it. You can go find it on Twitter. I, I'm so grateful to her for uh, enjoying the book, for for making people who I haven't spoken to in 15, 20 years emerge out of the woodwork to say that they saw <laughs> Chrissy Teigen's, I mean, really, her power is incredible. Um, so that's obviously been a unexpected and fantastic um, a, a perk of this book. But mostly it's once the book comes out, I do have to really work hard to let it go and to realize it's I, I don't have ownership over it anymore. So that's a difficult part. Of course, there's the deep satisfaction, which I'm not getting as much of this time of seeing it on bookshelves on bookshops. 
we don't know what the world's going to look like. It certainly doesn't look the way it did six months ago. So that doesn't exist. So I'm actually, um, I am quite social. I used to act. So I really enjoy these interactions. I really enjoy getting feedback from um, my readers and from seeing, since I can't see uh, bookshops, I like seeing other people post pictures on Instagram. That's sort of the equivalent. At least I get to get that thrill. But um, what I'm starting to return to now, which is always so deeply satisfying, maybe not as much of a high, but deep satisfaction is the work. It's getting yes. down to the, the new manuscript or deep into a manuscript. That's a, it's a different kind of satisfaction. It's so maybe it's not the adrenaline things. rush. I yes, think so. I don't know. And I see someone <laughs> just asked this. Someone asked this, and you know about the pandemic. And I have to say, so before the pandemic hit, I had started something that I was excited about. And it was good, uh, a bit different from my previous two. And I thought that would be what I would work on. But then the pandemic hit and I could not get my head around. And I'm sure many of you can't how quickly, how much of our world changed. I was in Bombay when it hit. And uh, at the end of March, Bombay went into a complete lockdown to the point where you couldn't leave your apartment except for essentials. And so we were stuck in this small two bedroom apartment with two toddlers and everything just changed so shockingly. And, um, you know, there were uh, migrant workers in India who were trying to get back to their villages and just and watching the numbers climb all over the world and seeing the suffering. For a while, I wasn't able to do anything except lie on the couch in complete shock and terror of what was happening around us and what was happening in the world. And uh, I didn't know, and I still don't completely know what world I was going to be writing for or about. Mm -hmm. But as tends to happen for better or for worse, new things become normal. And now I'm finding my footing again and I'm finding what I want to write about, um, maybe regardless of or as the world changes. Mm -hmm. So yes, I am. That's again a long answer to yes, I am working on something new. I it's not what I originally was. I've set that aside for if and when there's a suitable time to return to it. Um, but now I've got something new that I'm excited about that will hopefully um, not see the world change as drastically anymore again. Yeah, well, there's, there's something a little bit funny about reading your new book destination wedding in a time where all the weddings that I was going to go to this year have been postponed or canceled and destination weddings especially i mean international travel is not really happening so there's something you know it's i kind of get to like have that experience in your book instead of in real life but there's something i know isn't it weird to have it? an opening scene at an airport which was so <laughs> something so familiar to all of us is now so alien so for those of you who are canceling your trips or who have already canceled i hope the book allows you to travel a little bit because i know i get extremely frustrated not being able to travel yeah i know um, well, that's about our time today. It was really wonderful to talk to you and so good to see you. It was my pleasure, Taylor. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you to everybody who's joined us. And now, here's an exclusive excerpt from the audiobook, courtesy of Penguin Random House Audio. I cannot believe my mother is here with her boyfriend and I'm here alone. Tina Thus said to her best friend, Marianne Lang, in the British Airways business class lounge at JFK. Tina, in the hope that she would be able to sleep through the first leg of the flight to Heathrow, had rimless glasses on instead of her usual contacts. She never needed much makeup, thanks to her thick eyebrows, which had been a liability when she was younger, but were very fashionable now and gave her face all the drama it needed. She was wearing black North Face sweatpants that cinched at the ankle, a gray long-sleeved T-shirt, and black and white Adidas sneakers. It was hot in the lounge, so her guest's fur vest was hanging off the chair behind her. A bowl full of nuts was on the table in between them. Tina picked up a handful while staring out of the window and tossed them all into her mouth and started chewing before she realized she had eaten several whole pistachios with shells. The hard, cracked pieces pierced her mouth, and she spat them out. A grumpy old man appeared out of nowhere with a broom and shook his head at her as he swept up the pistachio shells. I didn't know they had shells, Tina said apologetically. The man said nothing, but kept looking at her as he swept, his broom knocking her foot aside. It isn't my fault, Tina said to him again, but he didn't respond. The man walked away and Tina turned to Marianne and said, 
at the price of these tickets, the nuts really shouldn't have shells. Marianne was applying lip balm and laughing. She was so good at putting on makeup that it was hard to say whether or not she had any on. But the smattering of brown freckles across her nose was visible. And despite the fact that it was November, still had a velvety brownness they usually acquired over the summer because she had recently been to San Francisco for Tom's college roommate's wedding. Marianne was wearing similar sweatpants and a plain black long-sleeved T-shirt, and a red shawl was draped over the back of her chair. We're like world-weary businesswomen who travel internationally twice a month and are just so over it, Marianne said. I feel like I should be impatiently clacking away on a laptop, but I have no work to do this week, and I bet Tom's fast asleep. Marianne looked down at her phone and the itinerary that had been sent by the wedding planner. It feels like we're going to have a lot of free time, Marianne said. There aren't that many events listed here. I thought Indian weddings had days and days of events. I think these days most people just pick and choose what parts they want to do. Shafali wanted to walk down the aisle in a white dress but my aunt put her foot down and said she could pick and choose what she wanted, but she couldn't change religions, Tina said. We'll have time to explore the city, though. Marianne nodded as she cracked open a pistachio and ate it and played with the shells in one hand. Their flight was two hours late, so they were on glass number three of champagne and plate number two of mini sandwiches. Even on Tina's decent income, these business class tickets were prohibitively expensive. She had managed to book an economy flight using her own money and then used her miles to upgrade herself. Tina was the vice president of development for Pixel, a streaming network for which she sought video content, a term she hated, but a job that paid her enough to live alone in a two-bedroom apartment overlooking McCarran Park in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Her work was frustrating. Ideas forever on the brink of becoming television shows, but nothing concrete yet. Nothing complete, nothing finished. Her enthusiasm for projects always waned as more people got involved, and ideas gradually got altered and then shut down altogether. At Pixel, Tina was in charge of finding content from India, so she had been back a few times over the past five years but it was always to either Delhi or Bombay, where she stayed at a Taj hotel, took a car and driver everywhere, and partied with producers from all over in rooftop bars and seaside clubs that could have been anywhere in the world. And then she returned to New York City without having seen much of actual India. Tina Das was conceived in India, but born nine months later in Columbus, Ohio, Three months later, like her father, she held a coveted American passport. Her mother stubbornly held on to her Indian passport and green card. For the first eight years of her life, her parents took her to India every summer, and they stayed with her aunt and uncle, the parents of Shafali, the bride, in New Delhi. In the eighth summer, her father got malaria and spent two weeks in Holy Family Hospital and decided on the flight back that he didn't want to return to India next year. Let's go to London next summer instead, Tina remembered him saying on the flight back that year. He had lost weight, and his belt was looped tightly around, his pants bunching at the waist. Back in Ohio, he bought new pants, without pleats, Tina had noticed, and the following summer they went to London, then they went to Ubud, then Stockholm, then Buenos Aires, then Tokyo, and even Colombo the year before Tina left for Yale, but never back to India. Her mother went once when her mother died in Calcutta, but that was all before the divorce. Thank you for listening to Books Connect Us. For more great book recommendations and information about your favorite authors, feel free to follow Penguin Random House on social media or visit penguinrandomhouse.com. And if you've enjoyed what you've heard, go ahead and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, as it helps more listeners to find our show. 
This podcast is produced by Pat Stango and edited by Clayton Gumpert. I've been Erin Leaf, and until next time, this has been Books Connect Us.